Hi, I'm Anika She, and she talks crime. Hello. Now, if you could hear the smile in my voice if you're listening to this podcast or if you're looking at me on YouTube, I'm smiling because I am so happy and I'm so grateful for all of you guys. This is our first episode of December, and if you're looking at the YouTube visuals, you'll see on our table we have a little bit of different decor. Last month we had a pumpkin, but now it's December. It's time to switch it up. We have a black Santa and we have a beautiful litten Christmas tree. <laughs> I want to tell you guys thank you so much i really appreciate all of you guys that tune in every week we're growing every day and i'm just so proud of it and i'm proud of myself too for remaining consistent with this podcast i really care about all of the cases that i cover and research and i'm so happy that you guys care and are interested too so i just wanted to give you a personal thank you before we started this episode On another note, I don't know about you guys, but me personally, as somebody who has listened and watched true crime for forever, I kind of don't like true crime podcasts and channels where everything they cover is only murder, murder, murder. Like, I know that sounds a little crazy, but there are other crimes that can be covered and are very interesting and deserve attention, which is why I'm covering today's case, where unfortunately there are two victims, but the killer or the person at fault isn't a person, it's a corporation. Let's jump straight into our imaginary scenario. I want you to think about your favorite guilty pleasure treat or snack. Whatever is that nasty, gross treat that you love that's high in sodium or high in sugar, whatever it is, think about that. And I want you to ask yourself, if somebody told you, one of those treats that you like so much has enough sugar, has enough sodium, has enough carbohydrates to send you into cardiac arrest, just one, would you still consume it? I would assume no, but guess what? Most of us don't even know what's in the things that we consume on a daily besides what's on the front of the packaging and what's in big red bold letters. We don't know what we're really eating and that's what today's case is about. In 2022 and 2023, a 21-year-old college student and a 46-year-old working man both died due to cardiac arrest after consuming Panera's charged lemonade. Their families are suing and say that Panera is to blame. Let's get into the case. This may be a shock to some of you, but I've never been to a Panera Bread before. Where I grew up in Brooklyn, there just were no Panera Breads around, so I didn't find out about the restaurant until I was well into my late teens, probably 20, 21 years old, and what I thought they sold was just bread. And then when I saw that they had other little extra things on the menu, it didn't really appeal to me because I'm a very picky eater. I don't like cheese, I don't like tomato sauce, and that limits a lot of things on Panera's menu so because i never been to panera i genuinely didn't even really know what it was like is it fast food is it nice dining but after researching i found out that panera was actually the pioneer behind the term fast casual dining they realized that there was a market for people who were too busy and had to go to work and didn't have time to sit down and dine at a fancy upscale restaurant but they wanted real food they wanted quality food that they also couldn't get at fast food restaurants which is where panera comes in they're the perfect blend of healthy well-made food that you can get relatively quickly that's what fast casual is. It's nicer than fast food, but not nicer than a fine dining restaurant. Panera actually started off as a classic cookie shop. Its founders, Ron Scheich, I'm sorry, I can't really pronounce it. I tried to Google it, but it's spelled S-H-A-I-C-H. Him and his partner, Louis Kane, they realized that they could be selling more than just croissants and bread and they could actually expand their market by selling upscale sandwiches too. Since then, their menu has expanded to cookies, pastries, bagels, bread, sandwiches, salads, and soups, and their most infamous bread bowls, which also is what the word Panera means. It's a Spanish word, and it also roughly translates to bread box or bread basket, which I feel like a lot of people don't know. 
And with the expansion of that menu, they were also able to expand their stores to over 2,000 bakery cafes across the United States and Canada. They're not global yet. Honestly, after researching Panera, I was really surprised to find out how innovative and revolutionary they were to the restaurant business. They have been a leader and a pioneer to many positive changes to the way Americans eat food today. Along with inventing fast casual dining, they were the first restaurant to have calorie transparency on their menu. So you know when you go to a restaurant, most restaurants, you can look at the menu and see exactly how much calories, whatever it is you're going to consume. They have things organized by lean and dietary needs. That is due to Panera's work. And now that's commonplace in a lot of American restaurants, which is really cool. They also were the first to offer antibiotic-free meat. 100% of their pork, chicken, and turkey is antibiotic-free and vegetarian-fed. And 89% of their beef is free-range and grass-fed. And all of their eggs are cage-free. They also donate all of their unsold bread loaves to charity. They bake every one of their baked goods fresh every day. They only sit in the store for one day. And I think that that is extremely commendable because all over TikTok, a lot of fast food workers share their like personal internal struggle that they have at the end of the day when they have to dump all of this perfectly fine edible food that could be given to the homeless, that could be given to somebody for free, but they can't. And not only do they have to throw it away, they have to make sure it's destroyed so nobody else can get to it. They have to seal it a certain way before it goes to the dumpsters so that nobody could go through the trash and get the food. And it's really sad and it's heartless. So it's really nice that they donate food because a lot of restaurants don't. They also have a pay as you can system at all of their lower income locations, which basically the menu items, all of the prices are suggested donations, but they accept whatever you can afford, which that is revolutionary to me because this is America. Y'all know capitalism comes first. So a restaurant, a full chain restaurant, this isn't like a mom and pop with like, you know, a nice couple who gets to know all of the customers and gives them discounts once in a while. This is a chain restaurant with a corporation and they somehow work it in their business model to think of people affected by having low income. And that is extremely commendable. And I was really shocked. I've never seen anything like that before. After finding all of this out about Panera, I feel confident to say that they're one of the most, if not the most, ethical chain restaurant that we have in America. You can tell that they care about their consumers, they care about their products, and they seek innovative and positive change, which is why it is so weird to me that they will be selling this charged lemonade. Now let's get into what a charged lemonade is. When you think about a charged lemonade, if you've never been to Panera or you've never had a charged lemonade from Panera, what would that name tell you? What kind of drink would you assume that is? Because I thought a charged lemonade would have been some sort of like health health tactic, like something like, oh, it has electrolytes, like, you know, vitamin water or um, Gatorade, like it has extra electrolytes or some sort of like liquid IV kind of thing, just like something to extra help and boost. But that's not what it is. It's actually caffeine. That's the charged piece about it. Panera describes their charged lemonade as naturally flavored, plant-based, and clean with as much caffeine as our dark roasted coffee. And if you're an average consumer like me, you'd probably just see that and think, oh, okay, so it has about as much caffeine as a regular cup of coffee, right? But then they also tell you it has 390 milligrams of caffeine. And again, if you're an average consumer like me, somebody who isn't very health obsessed, not a very big calorie counter, you probably don't know the average amount of calories for most of the things you consume. So you'd probably assume, okay, I guess 390 milligrams of caffeine is about how much is in a regular cup of coffee. But then when I tell you that you could drink a can of Coca-Cola, a cup of instant coffee, a Red Bull, 
and a monster energy drink all in one sitting and you still wouldn't reach the amount of caffeine that's in this one 30 ounce charged lemonade, you'd be a little alarmed. But then when I tell you that the FDA says the maximum amount of caffeine that a healthy adult can consume a day is 400 milligrams, that 390 sounds absolutely insane, does it not? This drink is literally 98% of the max amount of caffeine that you can have a day. Meaning if you were to drink one of these 30 ounce charged lemonade drinks, you can literally only have water for the rest of the day without your body literally just like going crazy. I don't know if I mentioned it, but they do have two size options. They have the 30 ounce, which is the 390 milligrams of caffeine, and they have the 20 ounce, which is 260 milligrams of caffeine, which is the equivalent to a Red Bull, a Monster, and a can of Coca-Cola. These charged lemonades do come in three flavors. They have strawberry lemon mint charged lemonade, mango yuzu citrus charged lemonade, and a new blood orange charged splash, which is their sugar-free option. But let's get into the ingredients. I already told you that it contains caffeine, but along with that, it has green coffee extract, yerba mate concentrate, guarana extract, and 70 grams of sugar, which is about 17 to 18 teaspoons of sugar. So a lot of sugar. And also all of what I mentioned are multiple sources of caffeine. So this drink, is very charged like they say the side effects listed for this drink are dehydration irregular heartbeat and heart failure which what like that's crazy but to be honest with you i felt like i couldn't make a solid concrete opinion on this drink until i tried it for myself and that's exactly what i did i ordered the mango yuzu citrus charged lemonade on uber eats yesterday and if you're watching the youtube visuals you can see that um a little bit over the half of the cup is gone because i drank a third of it and i let my boyfriend drink the other third of it because i was lucky enough to know the ingredients and know what i I was getting myself into with this drink and overall the drink itself tastes very mundane for what all the ingredients are to be honest with you it doesn't even really taste as acidic or you know citrusy as a lemonade would it was honestly a bit flat but it tastes like juice i tried it at around 7 30 p.m yesterday and i will tell you that i did not go to bed until 7 a.m and i am somebody who sleeps very late i typically go to sleep at about three four o'clock is the latest so i feel confident to say that that extra three hours of me being awake was a third of this drink along with that i was definitely feeling my heart beating like i could it was a little bit rapid and i also was having like leg tremors like you know how you shake your leg when you um have anxiety and stuff i was doing that as well but i could also be a bit biased because i'm somebody who does not consume a lot of caffeine the only caffeine i really consume is from soda i will have a coke every now and again and also i like like matcha which has a bit of caffeine in it but I don't like coffee I don't drink it the only coffee that I really consume is a frappe from McDonald's and I haven't had one in over a month due to the boycotts from Palestine Overall, I believe that the drink does what it intends to do. It leaves you feeling more energized. I was definitely more awake after I had it. I had more energy, whatever. But I do think it's incredibly irresponsible and a bit unethical to offer this much caffeine in one sitting. The actual drink, I think it would be fine if they had it in moderation, if they offered these as like smaller cups that weren't refillable and things like that. I think a shot of this would be fine, a very good pick me up. It is insane to me that they offer this in 30 ounces and a lot of people don't know what's in it so they will sit there and drink that entire 30 ounce drink with almost 400 milligrams of caffeine in it. And that's exactly what happened to both of our victims. Starting off with Sarah Katz. 
Sarah Katz was a 21-year-old college student at the University of Pennsylvania. She grew up in Jersey City and worked as a research assistant at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. She also served as a Rep Cap ambassador with the American Heart Association. She was a social chair of Sigma Kappa Sorority, a student leader in the John Marshall Pre-Law Honor Society, and she taught CPR in her spare time. There wasn't anything that Sarah didn't do. One of her closest friends described her as the most involved and passionate person I ever met, someone who would smile and wave to everyone on campus. Sarah was very clearly a very smart and kind young girl. From everything that I read, she strikes me as that one kid in school that you would just be like, how are they able to get so much done? How is she able to have so many extracurricular activities, maintain good grades, be out from dusk till dawn? Whereas you could only just complete your homework and you could barely do that. It like it makes you wonder where did she get this drive from? Maybe her health was her motivator because at age five, Sarah was diagnosed with a heart condition called long QT syndrome type one. Now, long QT syndrome is a disorder of the heart's electrical system that can cause abnormal heart rhythms as a result of exercise and or stress, but it can be managed very well with medication. And Sarah was on that medication and had regular doctor visits because of her condition. And she was always in good health because she was very diligent about her health, just like everything else in her life. She was so diligent that she completely avoided energy drinks. And she even told her closest friends and the people around her that she could not have energy drinks just to protect herself. Because, you know, a lot of times your friends, they don't know your medical history and things like that. So they could give you something that they think is completely innocent and it could be very deadly to you. Although she was adamant about avoiding energy drinks, her condition actually did allow her caffeine within moderation. So she was able to go to a party with her friends and enjoy a nice can of Coke or wake up in the morning and get a simple cup of coffee because the caffeine from those two things were small and in moderation and wouldn't hurt her. But Coffee and energy drinks are very different. While they both have caffeine, energy drinks have a lot more sugar and they have an extra stimulant. And that extra stimulant is what's dangerous to people with long QT syndrome. On September 1st, Sarah had bought the Unlimited Sip Club membership from Panera, which basically lets you pay a monthly fee for unlimited drinks. She bought this a week and a half before she died. When Sarah walked into the Panera at the time, trying to figure out what drink she would try, the charged lemonade was marketed as plant-based and clean to further fit the healthy narrative that Panera has. You know, people think that lemonade is a much healthier drink option rather than soda or certain juices, and you throw the word plant-based and clean and healthy around it, anybody's going to think that that's the better choice to make. Along with that, the lemonade was also advertised right next to all of Panera's non-caffeinated and less caffeinated drinks. They made it seem as casual as a cup of coffee by saying that it has as much caffeine as their dark roasted coffee. But in fact, a large roasted coffee from Panera has only 268 milligrams of caffeine, whereas a large charged lemonade from Panera has 390 milligrams of caffeine. So it's slightly deceitful marketing because the amount of caffeine that's in the small charge lemonade is the same amount of caffeine in the large dark roasted coffee you get it her family said that she thought it was a traditional lemonade with an electrolyte sports drink type of additive with a reasonable amount of caffeine just as anybody else would assume from that marketing and i'll ask you guys honestly after all that i described about her academic achievements and involvements and her diligence around her health i mean she's a member of the american heart association do you think that if sarah genuinely knew that this was an energy drink with this much caffeine, do you think she really would have chanced her life to drink this drink? I honestly and truly don't think she would have if she knew.
And her friend agrees because she said, I guarantee if Sarah had known how much caffeine this was, she would have never touched it with a 10 foot pole. On September 10th, 2022, Sarah purchased a 30 ounce charge lemonade from Panera. A few hours later, she was attending a birthday gathering at a restaurant for one of her friends. She collapsed in front of everyone and went into cardiac arrest. She was taken to the hospital via emergency services, and after many attempts to save her life, they pronounced her dead that same day. The medical examiner said that the cause of death was cardiac arrhythmia due to long QT syndrome, and it doesn't list the drink as a contributing factor to her death, but it notes that she had no other drugs in her system except what was given to her at the hospital to try to save her life. In 2023, Sarah's parents filed a wrongful death suit calling Panera's charged lemonade a dangerous energy drink and that Panera didn't properly inform or warn their customers. They filed this lawsuit so that at the bare minimum, people will know what's in the charged lemonade, but additionally, they would hope for the FDA to regulate energy drinks and they also hope that the drink is removed from all Panera stores. In response to the lawsuit, a Panera spokesperson said, quote, We were very saddened to learn this morning about the tragic passing of Sarah Katz, and our heart goes out to her family. At Panera, we strongly believe in transparency around our ingredients, and we will work quickly to thoroughly investigate this matter, end quote. But it wouldn't be long before another wrongful death suit would be filed against Panera. Dennis Brown was a 46-year-old man from Fleming Island, Florida, who worked at Publix for over 17 years, where he packed groceries and walked customers to their car. His family said that Dennis made everyone around him smile, and that he was an advocate for safety and inclusion for people with disabilities as a member of the Clay County Change Makers Self-Advocacy Group. And that makes sense because Dennis himself had an quote, unspecified chromosomal deficiency disorder, a developmental delay, and a mild intellectual disability, along with ADHD. But none of that stopped Dennis from living his life. He lived on his own and was able to take care of himself. And like I told you, he had a job. And Dennis loved Panera Bread. He used to visit it after work three times a week, even more on some weeks. He found something he liked and he stuck to it. So it would make sense that just like Sarah, Dennis would also be a part of the Unlimited Sip Club. But he also had high blood pressure. So again, like Sarah, he didn't drink energy drinks at all. But on October 9th, Dennis went to Panera and enjoyed a meal. And alongside that meal, he got a large 30 ounce of the charged lemonade. And he also got two refills while he was there. He had three 30 ounces of this charged lemonade. And by the time Dennis walked out of that Panera and was walking down the street, he fell down, collapsed, and died right there. They found him on the sidewalk. The medical examiner said that his cause of death was cardiac arrest due to hypertensive disease. It's also important to note that Dennis consumed that charged lemonade for six days leading up to his death, I would assume in smaller quantities, but his family said they don't know if he knew how much caffeine and other stimulants were in the drink, but if it was advertised as an energy drink, they don't think that he would have drank it. Also, another random piece of information is that on Panera's website, they describe the charged lemonade as, quote, the ultimate energy drink, but that description isn't anywhere in their stores. And it really begs the question, why would you have different descriptors and marketing online than you do in the store? Something as clear as that could have made a very big difference in both of these cases. Less than two months after Sarah's parents filed their wrongful death suit against Panera, Dennis's mother, brother, and sister followed in the same path, filing their wrongful death suit. And they're both actually being represented by the same lawyer and law firm. All Dennis's family wants is to get the message out there so that this doesn't happen again. Because he's in a vulnerable group, this could happen to. If the advertising was clear, he wouldn't have drank it, they said.
And Panera's response to this second lawsuit was, quote, Based on our investigation, we believe his unfortunate passing was not caused by one of our company's products. We view this lawsuit, which was filed by the same law firm as a previous claim, to be without merit. Panera stands firmly by the safety of our products. They also express their deepest sympathy for Mr. Brown's family. Since Sarah's lawsuit, Panera says that they, quote, enhanced our existing caffeine disclosures on their website, app, and restaurants. And I will say that when I went to purchase the charged lemonade, in big, bold letters, it does say, quote, not for children, people sensitive to caffeine, or pregnant, or nursing. And it also says in bold above the picture of the drink, it says contains caffeine on it but they have made no other attempts to remove or restrict the drink from any of their stores. My heart goes out to Dennis and Sarah's family because that is just a sad and ridiculous way to lose a family member. Both families feel like the charged lemonade killed their relative, but being honest with you, I feel like marketing is what killed Dennis and Sarah. I feel like the average consumer doesn't realize how deliberate, precise, and constant marketing is. From the moment you walk into a store, a restaurant, any place that has some sort of branding, you are being sold and marketed on a specific dream that this company wants you to believe. From the paint on the walls to the specific art that they use to the language that they speak to you in. I have had numerous retail jobs. I've worked at Bath and Body Works. I've worked at a tanning salon and now I'm an influencer and my main job is marketing. It is a genuine science which is why many companies have a dedicated marketing team to work for them. And if you've had a job in retail or somewhere even a little bit more upscale, you would know that too. At the tanning salon I worked at, they adamantly enforced in all of us, you don't say the word armpit, you say the word underarm. You don't say gratuity, you say tip. These things and this subtle change in language is supposed to elevate the experience of being at that tanning salon. Do you get it? The theme and color of this salon was white, light blue, and a sandy brown. It's to imitate the feeling of you being at a beach. All of the imagery on the walls were pictures of beaches and people kind of half naked in bikinis and things like that. You don't even realize that you're being sold on it until you directly look at what you're looking at. A lot of marketing is about sociology. It's about how the way places are structured influences the way we interact with that space. If you go into a bathroom and the floor is black, the walls are all black, the ceiling is black, the lighting is dingy in there, you smell, you know, a stink smell you are going to be more inclined to not use that bathroom versus if you come into a bright lit bathroom that looks clean, smells like pine saw, it's a more open and inviting environment. Marketing gives you the illusion of choice. They let the consumer think that they're making a nice and better choice when in reality, you are going to buy whatever it is they sell to you. And I'll give you an example. There's a TikToker named Matt Rosenman, and his whole content is about rebranding unhealthy foods to sound more healthy. So I'm going to give you an example from two of his videos, and let's see if you pick up on what it actually is. For my visual listeners, I'll put up a picture of the packaging, and for my audio listeners, I will describe to you the packaging. So the first snack we have is called Lean Cakes. It says, in quote on the packaging, a smarter way to snack. It also says 140 calories and pre-portioned for guilt-free snacking. It also says zero grams of trans fat and it says baked fresh with wholesome ingredients. Now, based on this description alone, which one do you think is the healthier snack option? This or a donut? I'll give you a second to think. What I just described to you was a Twinkie. It was literally a Twinkie. And I'm going to tell you, the word lean in lean cakes 
means absolutely nothing in marketing. It means nothing, which means brands are allowed to just say that to deceive you. It doesn't mean anything and it just implies that it's healthier or it's lower calories. Now, I told you that it was 140 calories and that it's pre-portioned for guilt-free snacking. Most Twinkies come two in a pack and it is 280 calories. So he literally just split them in half and now it seems like it's healthier when in fact it's not. Along with saying zero grams of trans fat, that's like me saying there's zero grams of sugar in this bottled water. Of course there's not sugar, this is water. They will do this tactic of taking away things that were never there in the first place so that you think it's better. Along with saying baked fresh with wholesome ingredients, technically it is baked fresh in a factory, but saying baked fresh to a consumer is gonna give the imagery of a bakery, of you know someone putting love into this and putting their own hand into the oven and that's just not the case. Let's go on to example number two. Our second snack is called fruit fluff and on the packaging of this fruit fluff there is the image of a tree but instead of green leaves there is colorful fluff coming out of the trees and the roots of this tree leads underground and at the root you'll see different fruits. It also says, quote, fat-free and sodium-free on the packaging, and along with it, it says, a lighter way to satisfy sweet cravings from nature with love. The brand for this fruit fluff is called Nature Sweet, and in small font, they write, naturally and artificially flavored. Now, would you think that this is a healthier option versus Skittles? Be honest, don't lie. You just might. But what I just described to you was cotton candy. It's cotton candy. And again, fruit fluff sounds a lot better than cotton candy. Anything with the word candy in it is automatically going to make you think unhealthy. Along with fat-free and sodium-free, cotton candy is literally just sugar. Where would the fat go? Where would the salt go? It's literally just made of sugar. And then it also says a lighter way to satisfy sweet craving. This is all just filler things to make you feel better. None of this adds and tells you what the actual product is. Along with saying naturally and artificially flavored, sure, the naturally part will make you feel better. But again, this is how a lot of the brands in the supermarket that you see and have a positive connotation of is because they want to. At the end of the day, the only thing that these brands can't lie about is the nutritional facts on the back of it. Do not trust any company's marketing tactics. Do not trust any marketing's slogans or whatever it is because the same way that Panera could have simply called this a energy drink flavored with lemonade, they didn't want to because Who's going to who's going to want that unless you know you want a crazy energy drink. They want you to think you're making a healthy choice so you could keep coming back so you could refill it. Even the way they have it set up in the store. The lemonade is in refillable containers like you literally just open the spout yourself and pour more. Even something like that invites customers to drink more of it. Panera is well aware of what they're doing and it's a shame that they don't care to change it for their customers' safety, but that's America, I guess. I want to say again, rest in peace to Sarah and Dennis. I hope all of you take this as a lesson to not trust any company's marketing tactics and to carefully read the ingredients of what you're consuming because these brands won't do it for you. Like always, all of the articles that I use for my research will be listed in the description and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Hello? Hello?